you know, it always becomes very difficult to live up to introductions. Uh, many of them tend to be exaggerated. Uh, they do tend to be factual, but the facts tend to get exaggerated. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Mr. Padi for uh, having me here, uh, to Subroto Bakshi, who originally engineered it here. I had the honor of working for Subroto Bakshi for many years in Wipro Limited before he uh, left us to start Mind Tree. Uh, you know, my, my philanthropic journey started with Wipro uh, many, many years back, about 12, 13 years back. I think it started too late and, you know, in retrospect, I wish it had started much earlier. I was inspired by my mother, who was a medical doctor who never practiced medicine. But at the age of 27, she formed the Children's Orthopedic Hospital in Mumbai for cerebral palsy children and polio children. It was the first of its kind in Southeast Asia. And uh, she worked at it from the age of 27 as a chairperson to the age of 78 as the chairperson, and she gave her life for it. Uh, and it, it's turned out to be quite a remarkable hospital which catered to a very major need. So part of my, my inspiration for philanthropy has really come from her. And part of my inspiration for uh, trying to build an organization with uncompromising emphasis on integrity of character has come from my father. So I owe a lot to my parents in terms of uh, what I am today. Uh, you know, we initially identified education as a focus uh, because of capacities and opportunities for us to contribute. Uh, it is relevant to the needs of the country and the cause reaches uh, the, educate, the, the educated child in, in a true form a fully educated child, is a strong national asset as a citizen. Uh, that is why we started to focus on education. And we just went round and round trying to grapple with the pro problem for many years. In the 12 years we started, uh, 12 years ago we started it. Finally, we got our thrust right about seven years back. And uh, we now work in the field. Uh, we have 1,400 people working in the field. We work in uh, seven states. We are engaged with 400,000 schools, and each school typically has about uh, 70 to 80 students, going up to about 200, 300 students. Our whole thrust there is trying to upgrade the quality of the teacher and the quality of the head teacher, because we believe very strongly that the child learns better, becomes a true citizen, if the teacher teaches better. So we do a lot of interventions, we do a lot of workshops, we do a lot of group interactions of teachers in terms of how we try to achieve this end result. We also work very closely with the district training institutes, of which there are 630 in the country. Every district has a district training institute. And every teacher is supposed to be getting refresher courses in this district training institutes for 17 days a year. It does not happen. The district training institutes become parking ground for troublesome teachers. They become completely obsolete in terms of curriculum. So we work very actively with them in terms of reassessing the curriculum, restaffing them along with the cooperation of the state government and trying to make them really contributors towards upgrading the quality of the teacher. We set up uh, a university uh, about two years later than we, about three years, two years later, than we went into this change in education seven years back. And the university is a not-for-profit university. It gives a master's degree in development, a master's degree in education. And now we have introduced bachelor courses uh, in liberal arts, now dovetail towards education. We want to produce educationarists in the country in a four-year course, uh, which is a complete short supply item in the country. Uh, there are many, many education teaching institutes, but they are just shelves. Uh, they give no teaching, 
And I think government now is in a major drive to close them down. Uh, it's facing a lot of political resistance. Uh, our university uh, gives about 70% of uh, our student scholarships. Uh, we have about 55% uh, ladies in it. And what we are very proud of is 70% of our graduates join the social sector. And that's the whole objective of the university. Uh, the total budget of the university, the room, board, and tuition fees, account for 10% of our total cost. 90% of the cost of the university is funded by the foundation endowment. About uh, three years back, we started an in initiative to fund NGOs uh, in a various areas of uh, focus, various areas of specialization. Uh, it has taken off well. We today have about 60 team members in our foundation and we have identified three or four very major strategic areas which we focus on. You know, what do, what do philanthropists bring to the table with uh, work which they can be doing for uplifting social, social uh, poverty, social depravity, social abuse, etc. One is they bring funding, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, part of the funding of the NGOs is getting choked because of government, central government stands of painting all of them with a black patch. Our experience is that the vast, vast majority of NGOs are very committed, are led by really devoted people, and they have been deprived of a lot of foreign funds, which now are going to Africa, which are going to Senegal, which are going to Syria, and our country is being deprived of those funds. And they were dependent on those funds to the extent of 30-40%. So they are now in a situation of contraction and in a situation of seeking funds. We provide those funds to those uh, NGOs. We commit to them for a minimum three-year period. Typical size of our grant is about three to five crores, but we can go up to seven, seven years in terms of our grant and five years in terms of our grant. And the grants get renewed based on certain milestones which they have to achieve. The, the private uh, philanthropists who, who work with NGOs uh, bring multiple perspectives in terms of approaches various skills and expertise, I think they understand scaling because most businesses grow and to grow you have to scale. Uh, and they are able to get more focus into the NGOs. I think they bring more flexibility in terms of the way the NGOs start to behave. And they're willing to increase the appetite for risk vis a -vis their own funding, which is very important if you want to experiment and go into untested areas and pivot into untested areas and they focus on impact. We have to have impact of our funding and we measure that very, very carefully, including within our APPI and also externally. What is it that uh, we are really focusing on in uh, Azim Premji Philanthropy Initiative? Uh, a key area which we have been very involved with the Odisha government for the past two years is in the area of nutrition. Uh, Odisha has very high rates of stunting as a result of malnutrition of the girl child, the boy child, as well as the mother. Uh, unfortunately, the mother in the Indian family eats the last. She'll feed the husband the first, she'll feed the male child the second, she'll feed the girl child the third and she will have the leftovers. And that is a disaster during pregnancy. A mother must get the right nutrition among pregnant, when she is pregnant to be able to produce a healthy child. Plus the child requires to have the right nutrition in the first 24 months after birth. Uh, and that is very, very critical. For the first six months, it has mother's milk, which is probably the best milk that a child can take. But for the next 18 months to 24 months, the child must be given supplementary nutrition of a very high quality. It helps in the brain formation, it helps in the body formation, 
it, uh, it reduces stunting to a very large extent. The second area which we are very involved in with the Andhra Pradesh government is, uh, and we work directly with the Chief Minister, who is extremely supportive, is in the area of climate resistant zero budget farming. Uh, the program is being very ably read uh, by the RYSS. Uh, we are funding it partly, the state government is funding it, international agencies are funding it, and it's an extremely scaled program. The objective is to take this program to 50 million farmers. And we've already reached almost uh, 30, 40, 30, 40 thousand farmers in terms of our experimentation and we are very rapidly scaling. Uh, the third area which is a strategic area for us is uh, improve communities access to benefits in Gujarat, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka and Odisha. This program works at multiple levels of governing bodies, the Gram Sabha, the Gram Panchayat and standing committees. We promote bottoms up participatory planning and adopt a demand-driven approach to service delivery. It's amazing how, how visionary the constitution was in terms of building up a grassroots governance organization. Unfortunately, it does not work. And what we do is we work with specialized NGOs to explain to people their rights, to explain to the women their participation, to be able to do planning at a grassroots level and to hold the planners and the government accountable for delivering on those plans. What does government bring into these partnerships? Government is the largest system there is and the only one which is permanent. We come and we go. Uh, capacity to scale and reach large numbers. The government has the powers for it. So it's essential that in any major strategic initiative you have to work with government. Uh, systems and infrastructure to mainstream and to institutionalize. Hands and legs of being of the program, that is school teachers, Angarwadi workers, uh, etc. Our experience in week working with government has been very positive. And I'm not saying that just because I'm addressing a group of uh, bureaucrats and a group of government team members, but that's been our experience. Uh, the highly committed champions in government. You know, they are the typical distribution of any companies. 20% are outstanding people, excellent people. 60% are people who are willing to contribute towards the system. And 20% are write-offs. And those 20% write-offs are also in our own companies. Uh, they are the drag on the system, but uh, the earlier we can eliminate them in the com company, we eliminate them. Unfortunately, in government, it's not so easy to exit them or to outplace them. Uh, the Orissa Livelihood Mission, uh, starting a new vertical, establishing a household, kitchen gardens and poultry to improve dietary diversity. This is despite the fact that they perform a difficult task in difficult circumstances. What have we been able to achieve working with government and working with NGOs? One most important thing is mutual learning. Second most important thing is set up pathways for scalable, long-term, systematic change. The stage has to sustain after continuous intervention because the interventions cannot be permanent. In Odisha, 10 government departments have come together, including women and child development, health, rural de development, and agriculture. Uh, they have developed a common results framework, single Orissa Nutrition Action Plan. In Andhra Pradesh, 1.6 lakh farmers are adopting to natural farming within two years of commencement of the program. Improvement in farm ecology and producing higher quality healthy food. What has been our key learnings in making these partnerships work? One is not taking any credit. It is very important that the work we do is in the background, that the credit for the work we do go to the school teachers, 
go to the state functionaries and go to the government bureaucrats. That to us is the asset test of success in working with government. We have to establish trust. Trust is a very important anchor on which all our success lies. We need to exhibit a long-term commitment. We exhibited our long-term commitment to schools by building schools, uh, the sample schools or the benchmark schools, by putting embedding people in districts. Each of our districts, and there are 40 of them, would be having anywhere from 20 to 70 full-time employees. That's how we establish our commitment to that district, and that's how the government believes and the district believes that we're there to stay. We have to have razor-sharp focus to get the impact. And we have to mainstream and institutionalize the interventions and the initiatives which we put on the ground.